In this Gibbs Cam Tech Tip, we will show you how to cut chamfers on the top edges of parts. First, we have a chamfering tool. In this case, it's a countersink. And the countersink is 3 quarters diameter, 90 degree included angle, 0 tip diameter, which means that we have 3 eighths of usable flute. This is something we need to know before we start to create the tool path. This part has 100 thousandths by 45 chamfers here and here, and the step is 0 and minus 0.5 for the roofs of these two features. When we define the tool path, we first tell it where the top of the tool path is at 0 in this case, how far we want to drive the cutter down. Since we have 3 eighths worth of usable flute, I want to drive the cutter down a quarter of an inch because I don't want to leave a mark on the part where the tip of the tool is. So, top of the tool path first, bottom of the tool path second, and lastly, we're going to drive the cutter into the part the width of the chamfer. That's a negative number, minus 0.1. Now, when we use the profiler to select the geometry, make sure that you select the largest shape of the part before you press do it or redo. Make sure you don't click up in here or anywhere on the chamfer. You must get the largest width of the part. The same thing for the lower step. The lower step we start at minus 0.5, and we're going to drive the cutter down 250 past that, and then still we're going to drive the cutter over 100 thousandths. I do have cutter radius comp on, and I do have a generous entry and exit radius. Let's look at this toolpath from the left side of the workpiece. We're going to go in single block, and you'll see the cutter approach the part. We're going to zoom in nice and tight. The cutter now engages the material and now we're going to cut all the way around. Same for the bottom. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this tech tip.